Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for Creme 2 News First at 4. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Sherry. Every time you fill up in Washington, you're spending nearly 50 cents a gallon in state gas tax. So would you be willing to pay a lower gas tax at the pump and instead pay for each mile you drive, say by using a phone app? Glenn Farley from our sister station in Seattle was in Olympia on where a pay by mile study of 2000 Washington drivers just wrapped up. To be clear, pay by mile is not imminent in Washington state. We may never see it here, but two other western states have either implemented it or are about to. Typically I pay anywhere from 60 cents to a dollar a month. For years now, we've been following progress in Oregon. It too had an evaluation phase and King 5 rode along with drivers, including Evan Burroughs. And this really worked out really well. That system is now up and running as Origo, and it's also voluntary. The cost, 1.7 cents per mile, your gas tax credited back on your account. But the idea of paying per mile has long been a tough sell. It's hard enough to make it as it is nowadays, just going back and forth to work. The steering committee has had their final meeting. The Washington State Transportation Commission is tasked with looking at charging by mile as an option more electric vehicles and hybrids on the roads. The legislature and the commission figures the gas tax will no longer bring in enough to pay for road and bridge construction along with maintenance. Our legislature each year has been directing this research, um, making sure it's feasible and that it pencils or that there's a financial case to be made. Rima Griffith is executive director for the Transportation Commission. Today, members heard about implementation, even how to guard against people trying to fudge their mileage numbers lower while they use the GPS in their phones. Right now, the break point depends on your mileage, and owners of gas hogs may have reason to hope. So if you drive a car that gets under that 20 miles per gallon, so let's say you get 15 miles per gallon, um, you're actually going to pay a little less in taxes for our roadways. Now, as for those 2,000 people around Washington who participated in the evaluation of this system, and were also told no money actually changed hands, 68% said, yeah, they'd rather go with a pay-by-mile system. Nearly 20% said, no, they'd rather stick with the gas tax. As for that other western state looking to implement, Utah is expected to go on January 1st. In Olympia, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Scraps is asking for your help today in an animal cruelty investigation. Leaders say a man brought the cat to the shelter who had suffered brutal physical abuse. He told uh, Scraps that students near Logan Elementary School had kicked and tormented the cat. The cat. Scraps said the cat named Achilles suffered a dislocated pelvis and right hip. Scraps is waiting to see if his body heals before they do a surgery to repair the cat's hip. Anyone with information about the abuse is asked to email or call Scraps. Mm. Meantime, the Spokane County Sheriff's Office says the social media threat made to Deer Park High School was not credible. After talking to people involved, students from Deer Park High School and North Central High School admitted they were just, quote, talking trash. The students were initially messaging each other on the group chat on Snapchat about which school was better in basketball. A spokesperson with the sheriff's office says as students spread the information, the threats became exaggerated. Extra police officers were at Deer Park High School today just as a precaution. Well, after a two year absence, the full 140.6 mile Ironman triathlon race is coming back to Coeur d'Alene. Half Ironman races were held in late June the past three years, but now the full Ironman is set to return in 2021. The Coeur d'Alene City Council voted to bring it back just last night. Half Ironman events will take place in the following two years, 2022 and 2023, around the same time in late June. Mm. The idea would be the full race would return every third year. Glad to have that back, right? Great event. All right, talking about weather today, kind of cloudy, but pretty nice overall. But Tom, change is moving in. Yeah, moderate temperatures today, but we do have those changes. Look for rain to develop in the overnight hours. Let's go over here, take a look at the current temperature. 59 degrees, that's where we're sitting. Wind is not a factor right now, but it is going to be a factor, especially as we get Friday into Saturday. Uh, winds currently out of the northeast at five miles per hour, kind of the calm before the storm. We take a look at the future tracker model. These are the future tracker wind guides. 
guess, the blue being only in the 10 mile per hour range. Here's Thursday morning at 730. Now keep an eye on this. Watch the winds really begin to increase, especially over in the Cascade Range as you get into the purples right there. That indicates that we're seeing wind gusts much stronger up around 40 miles per hour. Red uh, indicates more like 30 mile per hour wind gusts across areas of eastern Washington and we'll keep that going through Friday at four in the afternoon with some of the stronger wind gusts expected up towards the uh, panhandle of Idaho. So yeah, you get the idea. We're looking for windy conditions, especially as we get into Friday and the first part of the weekend. Tracking some rain showers still west and north of the Spokane area. Day planner forecast calling for rain developing. Rain expected overnight. Just get used to that. We'll see an overnight low of 44, so kind of mild. 57 the expected high tomorrow. We'll see mostly cloudy skies. More scattered showers expected for tomorrow, but by tomorrow night we'll see more rain develop. For the weekend forecast, it is going to be cool, wet, and windy. 46 on Saturday and then lingering showers on Sunday and a high of about 49. Hmm. I'm debating right now, Tom, whether I mow the lawn one more time <laughs> for the end of the season or if you, I just let uh, it go. No, no, I think you mow and if there's any leaves on there, take the bag off and mulch them. That's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tom. Well, in other news, the White House is digging in as it pushes back against the impeachment inquiry looking into President Trump's dealings with the Ukraine. Whitney Ward joins us in the studio with what Republicans are demanding. Whitney. Good afternoon, both of you. So President Trump and his allies are slamming the Democrats right now over how they are conducting this impeachment inquiry. The vice president, the Pentagon, the Office of Management and Budget, and the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, all now are refusing to comply with congressional subpoenas. They're calling this impeachment inquiry baseless and illegitimate because it has not yet been approved by the full House. Republicans, though, demanded to see the transcripts of interviews that House committees have conducted, but they have so far been denied. They're also now filing a censure motion against Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff. The Republicans won't forget it because what they're doing, what the Democrats are doing to this nation is a disgrace. So the inquiry continued today with former State Department employee Kurt Volker, who is returning for a surprise appearance with congressional investigators. Texts and emails indicate that Rudy Giuliani, working with Volker and Ambassador Gordon Sondland at the time, had urged Ukrainian officials to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son. Then, of course, the president's conversation with the Ukrainian president urging much of the same is kind of what sparked all of this. Now, Congressman Schiff right now says the transcripts from the testimonies will be made available to everyone after all of the interviews are completed. Well, that was a close call for an Idaho State Police Trooper last week. Fortunately, he is OK. He was taking photos of a wreck when a driver who oh wasn't paying gosh. attention caused another crash. Well, that trooper spoke up with our Taylor Vido. He told him it's a sad danger that many first responders face. Trooper Enrique Yarenas looks pretty calm today, but he'll admit. I'm still somewhat in shock. That's right. Take a look at the video again. This was recorded on a dash camera last week. He was taking photos of this crashed car when another accident happened. Are you okay? I'm good, I'm good. You all right? Yeah, but I'm okay. From the looks of it, the trooper was just feet, if not inches, from getting hit. And all of a sudden, I hear screeching. I look up, and I just see a car coming towards the vehicle. I was photographing with all the adrenaline and everything going on in my mind. All I could say was, whoa. It happened at the intersection of Ramsey and Highway 53, just outside of Rathdrum. It's easy to miss in the video, but another driver was trying to cross the highway when they hit this tow truck, which then slammed into the already wrecked car. The tow truck driver wasn't at fault. The driver who caused the crash was hurt, but Yarenas was surprisingly unscathed. You know, if it wasn't for what I was trained to be safe, you know, who knows if I would have re reacted the same way. The issue is a serious one, he says. State law says that drivers must slow down or move over when there's an accident on the side of the road. Yarenas has only been on the force for not even a year, but he's already had a close call. He has co-workers with similar stories. Always happy after every shift to go home, see my kids and wife. The driver who caused the chain reaction crash likely got a ticket, he says. And if you don't move over or slow down for crashes in the first place, you could get yourself a $90 ticket. But trooper Yarenas says, Let's not get to that point. You know, my wife is a lot more scared than I am feeling. As I said, I'd still, I just try to laugh it off, um, but it's unfortunate. In Kootenai County, Taylor Vido, 
Cream Tunis. My goodness, glad he's okay, yeah, right? That. No doubt. Dangerous. Well, the new Loof Carousel building is a little more than a year old, but it's already in need of repairs. The top of the building specifically is covered in rust. Crime 2's Nicole Hernandez tells us about the fix in the works. That's right, so it's not super noticeable, but there's actually a dome on top of the carousel's roof. Now, to take a look at this video from earlier this year, you can see that that dome is actually brown and rusty. Now, it's not supposed to look that way because this building is practically brand new. This is video we have from before the dome started rusting. You can see it's a nice shiny silver color. That's how it's supposed to stay, but the city told us that when the building was under construction, the workers put a sealant over the top of the paint that actually came off. That left the paint exposed, which rusts in extreme temperatures. Given Spokane's extreme climate, that started pretty quickly. So it was too hot during the summer, and then the September cold hit pretty hard. Um, but the contractor is going to put a temporary paint solution uh, here coming up very shortly. And then the permanent solution will be later in spring of 2020. Now, since we did that interview, the city actually already did that temporary fix, and luckily they noticed the rusting during the one year warranty of this building. So all of these fixes aren't costing the city any extra money here in Spokane. I'm Nicole Hernandez.